to acquire good throw breaks, I've always said, try to spam throws on your opponent. And this is where you help yourself against King in every other matchup you play. If you have bad throw breaks, spam throws because, because people are petty as fuck. But the more you throw, the more people will throw you and the more you get the opportunity to practice your throw breaks. What's up guys, main man Sui here, hoping you're all doing awesome as always, welcome back to the How To Beat series, today we're doing the largest boy in Tekken, Kang, the Mexican wrestler, the quintessential grappler, best throws in the game by a goddamn mile, you don't know the break, watch the cutscene, cinema, it's literally 30 seconds of getting ragdolled, by the wall of muscle. It can get really infuriating dealing with this character. God knows I've eaten a million chain throws ever since Tekken 2. I've actually always loved this character. He was my first main, one of the most popular and iconic characters in Tekken history. He's super fun to play and more technical than people think. There's a lot of execution, but God knows it can get really annoying. So that's why I'm here today. I'm gonna try and give you a lot of pointers and hopefully this will help you dealing with, uh, dealing with the character. But in short, this guy can kill you in two throws, literally, he can kill you in two throw interactions and you are dead. So best throws in the game by far. And this is in a game where throws have never been stronger. Throws now have counter utility. Throws do, do, deal true damage. There's no recoverable health. Recoverable health is a super important factor in this game. That's the big nerf to combos. Half the damage I just dealt you with my launcher, you can recover if you gain momentum on me, which you can do from a heat burst, for example, to break my momentum or a fucking rage art, like anything. But with froze, there's just no recoverable health. It is just true damage. And you add the counter to utility. Froze have never been deadlier. Who has the best froze? Bad guy. Here's my giant swing with uh, 10 frame fucking startup. Uh, here's my blue spark giant swing. If I do a normal giant swing, you have 20 frames to break that. If you counter it into same giant swing, you have 15 frames to break that. That is super difficult already. If I do my blue spark giant swing, this one, and you press into it, it counter hits you, you have seven frames to break it. No one on planet Earth is doing that. That's also why I consider King personally the best counter hit character in the game above someone like Steve, above someone like Lee, above someone like Dragonov, etc. That counter hit utility is absurd. He also has one of the best counter hit tools in the game and a 13 frame mid check that is counter hit confirmable into 75 damage into Oki. Note this, that's a one break, that's a two break, but they look the same. That's a one plus two break. Oh, it's a three-way mix-up, but all look the same. You don't know the break. You can't visually see what he's doing and say, Oh, that's a one break, that's a two break. He has true throw mix-ups. Blue Spark, Shining Wizard, Blue Spark, Change Swing. They're identical. They're twins. One's a one break, one's a one plus two break. These are true mix-ups. But that's a really strong king player that will threaten you with that or run into giant swings and stuff. Crazy things. But I'm gonna give you four pointers that hopefully will help you a lot with this. But I'm just trying to say, throws have never been stronger and he has the best throws by a mile. By a mile. And the Oki he can get after certain throws is also disgusting. Outside of the sheer damage output of some of these throws. So, uh, the guidelines. Number one, get really good throw breaks. Of course, that's easier said than done. You need throw breaks, otherwise you're going to die. You're not gonna wanna duck. I'm gonna get into it. Number two, any low with high evasion is kind of golden against King. Number three, the further you're away, the better. This is the kill zone. Here, ah, actually, I'm in a pretty decent spot. He's not that good at initiating on me, and his keep out, I said of this, is not very good. Number four, man, I have poor throw breaks. Don't duck! This is what all of you beginner and intermediates do. I can break these toes! And you start ducking, and then this happens, this happens, this happens, this happens. Don't do that. Instead, sidestep. Because sidestep beats throws and beats a lot of the aforementioned striking. And he has to commit to a homing button, and his homing buttons are just not that scary, in my opinion. 
The mids are though. The goal is going to be to actually not duck too much because the lows actually aren't that scary. The goal is going to be to have strong throw breaks so I don't have to duck for throws. Instead I'll step and step throws and try to launch punish king because throws have pretty long recovery. And uh, yeah, the lows aren't just that threatening. And a well-timed step will also beat this low, which has no tracking. So get into the habit of stepping, not of ducking. And this one I can't stress enough. I can't stress that one enough. So these are the guidelines. And now we're gonna try and break them down a little bit. Yeah, get strong throw breaks. This is a like universal skill in Tekken. It's just a fundamental, being able to break throws. To acquire good throw breaks, I've always said, try to spam throws on your opponent. And this is where you help yourself against King in every other matchup you play. Uh, say I'm going up against a Lee or whatever, spam throws. If you have bad throw breaks, spam throws because, because people are petty as fuck. And some people are also dumb as fuck. They need to see a throw to go like, all right, throws are in the game. All right, and they start throwing. Um, but the more you throw, the more people will throw you and the more you get the opportunity to practice your throw breaks. In general, throw breaks, if you see two arms, it's a one plus two break. If the right arm leads, it's a um, two break. And if the left arm leads, it's a one break. King upends this completely. He completely upends this though. But th th these are the basic rules of throw breaks and you have 20 frames to break the throw. So again, I wanna stress, don't resort to ducking. Sidestepping is better, but there are some nasty wall situations against King. I'm being pressured by King here. And here you really don't wanna sidestep because of this move or this move. Both walls splat you, both are mid uh, and both are homing. So you gotta be so careful. You have to respect there. Um, but again, you don't wanna duck because again, wall splat. So I can't stress enough how, how important throw breaks are going to be to you. Those were the basics of throw breaks. You just have to understand that K King is insane on the throws. He has true throw mix-ups. Like, uh, this is a giant swing. This is a shining wizard. But if executed properly, they look identical. We're twins in terms of animation, so that, that's actually a, an unseeable mix-up. You have to guess, is it a one break or is it a one plus two break? Because the running throw, Shining Wizard, is a one plus two break. But if it's done point blank with a blue spark, it looks like a giant swing. And King players will run into giant swings. Like you, ha you have no clue. But then again, stepping comes in and here you sort of have to read the King player. What does he like to do? So first off, Giant Swing is the best throw in the game. The golden rule when you play against King is to when you see two arms come out, you always press one, in my opinion. 95% of Kings are super predictable. So you see two arms come out, you press one to break that. You do not press one plus two as you would on, on any other character. Hopefully you, you have 20 frames to break that. Again, you heard about the counter it property. If you fail the giant swing break, wait, and then uh, just as you're about to hit the ground, mash all of the buttons and you'll tech roll and you'll beat 20 of the damage you will not take. If you fail the break, you have to tech it, otherwise it does too much damage. King has his back towards the wall, you have to be super ready for the giant swing. He is going to want to giant swing you because when he has his back towards the wall, you are not allowed to tech. You're gonna get slammed into the wall for like gigantic damage. If he has rage, it's even more damage. And now he gets a wake up situation right at the wall. You have to press one, one there and you have to be ready for it. Of course, an advanced king player can also do this, and it's a 1 plus 2 break, and it looks identical to a giant swing, and, you know, but that, that's advanced stuff. You, 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 have, you have to press 1 there, because your giant swing is just too strong in that situation. A very basic king is also going to do a sloppy shining wizard. He's not going to do the blue spark one like this. He'll run a bit into it, and this is a 1 plus 2 break. If you see a running throw, Mo for mo against most kings, this is going to be a 1 plus 2 break. Yes. And then most sloppy kings will use tombstone a lot. And this is where if you see the right arm lead, that's going to be a 2 break. 
against very basic kings, you can actually get 100% throw break in that if you see two arms from standing neutral, press 1. If you see a running throw, press 1 plus 2. If you see a weird throw animation which is not both arms at the same time, a normal command throw, press 2. Most kings are really lazy. They will only use these three throws. And if you know this, you can break this 100%. But I hope you understand that it can get really disgusting with these throws, where you can only guess. And that's where you have to not duck, but employ sidesteps. And also, moves that have uh, high evasion are really good. And again, if you don't want to deal with throws, uh, this is the kill zone. If you're standing here, it is much more difficult for a king player. He literally can't throw you. Unless he wants to dash in into a Shining Wizard, or if he's an advanced king, he dashes into a, a giant swing, right? But that's very hard to do. Most kings can't do that. And there you can step, and you can try to use your keep out low, right? Like Kazuya's down back free. Stuff like that is very good. And it also beats muscle armor, right? Which is king's best keep out. Stay away from me, while my high evasive low beats that as well. That's why I like this sort of stuff. And that's also why King really struggles against characters like Xiaoyu, characters like Eddie, or if they add Lei, God, I ho God forbid they do. But characters that are always beating highs while advancing with lows, etc. That type of checking. King really doesn't like that stuff. You can't guess all of these throws. Stay away. Sidesteps are your friend. The homing is not as scary. He has to check, it will check you mostly with forward four, which will knock you down. High evasion is really good. When you're close to King, try and pressure him a lot. When you have momentum, his panic buttons are risky. If he tries Atlas Hammer, he's launch punishable. He'll try to do uh, muscle armor, right? And this is where, unfortunately, you guys don't punish this enough. Maybe you don't know how to counter it. I don't blame you. We're standing a few steps away. This is the ironic thing that King is, is hard countered by Froze himself. The Grappler can't deal with Froze, right? Muscle Armor will 100% lose to Froze. This is hard counter. You hear that effect? My Fro is now uh, unbreakable. Unbreakable. So don't try to run in with something like this on someone spamming Muscle Armor, right? Because he'll do that, or he'll even launch you. But again, this is why I stressed a hard counter here is also lows. So if he's trying to keep you out with like uh, throws or jabs, I, I just like this sort of stuff. Or on a hard read, I'll run in and do a big old command throw, right? So don't let them get away with mu muscle armor like that. King can do a Jaguar sprint like this, uh, forward 3-4 into a mix-up. And this is armored when he's in heat. If you strike into this with mids or highs, he'll absorb them, and then he'll do a mix-up on you. He can do a safe mid on block that launches you. Unseeable, disgusting. And he can do all sorts of other stuff. He can do mids like this. It's just not that scary. And a not so threatening low. But he can also do an RKO out of fucking nowhere. That hurts like a motherfucker. It gives a guaranteed Ali kick afterwards. It gets a guarantee. It gives a guaranteed heat smash on the ground. It is homing. You can't step that. It's disgusting. This game was balanced for offline competitive play. The developers know that at 23 frames is when uh, any person with average reaction speed can be expected to react to something, an attack, and deal with it. 23 frames, uh, Ni nee made a statement a year ago on this, 23 frames is where we can universally say a move is reactable to pretty much everyone if you've put in the work, right? Because you also need to practice uh, seeing this animation, right? If you practice enough seeing this animation, RKO for this reason comes out to 23 frames and also has a very exaggerated throw animation where his arms go far out from his chest and he's going to grab you. I can react to RKO, but this game was balanced for offline. And this is, this is just unfortunate in that King becomes, this becomes kind of a toxic mix up online because when you add lag to this, you're not gonna duck this on reaction. 
And suddenly, this is this almost turns into a 50-50, unfortunately. Offline, that's not a 50-50. So, unfortunately, 99.99 .99 of Tekken matches are played online these days. It's just an online game. But, I just wanted to tell you that, just as you did on the muscle armor, I really don't want to see you afraid of trying to check King here. Because way too many players turn into deer in the headlights here and just watch King run into them. Like this. Don't be afraid of trying to fuck him up because uh, throws are hard counter here as well. To Jaguar Sprint. He can't break this. Or a low. So try to not respect this shit as much. Try to hard counter it with lows or with throws. Because a lot of king players get way too comfortable running in your face for two seconds and then applying the mix-up. Even a tiny amount of lag, you won't duck RKO on reaction. And it's homing, so you can't step. You have to get into the habit of challenging him instead. Because the mix-up is so fucking cancerous. It has helped me so much, and I've noticed when I play king, the smart players, they just fucking check me immediately. They're like, I'm not dealing with this shit. But then, of course, try to be unpredictable. If you check him once super fast, next time he'll probably gonna bust out his mix-up super quickly. So then maybe try and block and get a read. And when King is in heat in general, like, his heat smash has literally infinite reach. It's, it's just so much reach. Too many heat smashes have, have way too much tracking. That's why I love, like, DLC heat smashes, they're all steppable. Dragonovs is very steppable now. Uh, a lot of heat smashes are steppable. Heihachi is, is how every heat smash should be. It has very little reach uh, compared to other heat smashes, and it has no tracking whatsoever. And I'm like, great! Every heat smash should be like that, because we're so strong on block, you know, or on hit. But with King, when he's in heat, you don't really want to step him. Because uh, you can step this move, but it requires that you step when he has started the attack, and now you step! But good luck getting the timing. You gotta respect him. He'll take a Jaguar Sprint mix-up from you blocking the heat smash because you have to block in this situation. So here you block, and then we have this mix-up, right? But then see what he does with his timing. Does he pull the trigger immediately? Or can you challenge him? That sort of stuff. But yeah, not gonna lie, that heat smash needs toning down. It should have no tracking. I love when King players say, Oh, King doesn't have a lot of damage. Look, he did a hop kick. Wow. And it only did 69 damage. They always very conveniently forget about the fact that once he finishes you here, uh, this uh, power bomb or whatever it's called, he gets a super dumb Oki situation. If you try to do any type of getting up from the ground or get up kick, kip up, everything, this will hit forward four for an additional 20 damage and now half your ha life bar, health bar is gone, right? You can beat that by doing mask attack, which is holding uh, up, right? Then you can block that, but that's beaten by down for four, and then when you hold up like that, he'll of course apply a mix-up on you, because he will immediately go into a standing guard. So you have to take a mix-up. If you choose to stay on the ground, uh, he can do ground throws, obviously, to fuck you up. And ground throws can sometimes link into ground throws. And now you gotta get up again. Oh, and I just love this as well. If he's in heat. And he does his combo ender like this. Heat smash. This will hit you on the ground. And again. Oh, sorry about that. A neighbor is drilling. I hope you can't hear it. But this is an unfortunate situation. But if you stay on the ground. Heat smash connects. How do you beat this? Muscutech gotta hold up in quick stand. So then, you have to take this on, on your guard, right? Like this, and it does chip, and now it's take the mix-up. It's, it's just disgusting Oki. And how many of these throws, or chain throws, will put you in situations like this? Where he can hit you, if you try to get up. He can hop kick you, in the butt, between the butt cheeks. It's just not fun, like the Oki is super strong. So this is where you have to see the king's habits. Do I stay on the ground? Do I get up? I do want to stress also that with the chain throws, if he goes the one break route, RDC, rolling death cradle, is, is the one to be on the lookout for. This, this is a two break. 
And when you break chain throws in this game, any type of chain throw, hold the button. Hold, the, don't mash it. Hold the button. RDC, hold the two button. You'll break it every time. You can mix this with Dragon Sleeper, which most kings won't do. Oh, oh sorry, God, nah, I'm a moron. Sorry, there's so much to keep track of in my, my small head. Boom. That's a one break. When he does, oh sorry, key charge, you cry. No, but when he does this one, this is a 50-50. He can do the entire screwdriver sequence involving one breaks or two breaks. I shit you not. I shit you not. Every part of this sequence, he can 50-50 you. So you're, you're gonna hold one or you're gonna hold two. Standing heel hold, these are the best chain throws. So these are the ones we focus on. This is a two break. And King's Bridge is a 1 plus 2 break. You, you skip out on all of this damage if you hold 1 plus 2 here. Which is what you're going to do. Because this does so much da more damage than, than the other ones. You can do Sharpshooter or this one. STF, I think. Does significantly less damage but gives disgusting Oki as you're trying to get up there. But hold the Chain for Break button. Down for 2-1 has to be ducked. Uh, a top tier king player will Twitch confirm this. He sees you press into this and he adds the follow up and you're launched. But that's the top 1%. Everyone else is gonna mash this out and you always duck that second hit and launch king. Also remember, down for 1 is one of his best pokes. If he ever finishes this, he's minus 10 and you're gonna take your jab punish. Forward to one is also one of those lazy king players things. They throw this out. Always duck for second hit. Again, he can mix this up with this. And it's kind of disgusting. But most kings don't do that. Most kings will be so accustomed to people not ducking this. That they lazily throw it out. Duck for second hit. Launch king. This is an important move. It is minus 13 on block. It's devastating on counter it, but it loses to sidestep super hard. If you block it, it's minus 13, which is too good. It should be at least minus 14, but take your punish. But hopefully you stepped it because it has no tracking whatsoever. And you launch king. Shove is a very strong check. You see the nine frame animation there. The animation is nine frames, but it's forward for neutral one plus two. So the fastest this will come out is 12 frames. But that's a neutral on block mid, but on counter hit gives this guarantee. And of course, if he is in heat, this will lunge, right? But with super scale damage though. But again, it just goes into like, his counter hit utility is very strong, but uh, basic kings don't use this too much. Um, so that, that's more of an advanced king thing. I hope you understand what makes him so strong in Tekken 8, what we're constantly looking out for, and what are the basic guidelines and rules in how to play against him, how you want to position yourself against him. But yeah, he's very, very strong. And uh, unfortunately, the nature of this being an online game uh, gives us problems. He's also stronger than he should be, in my opinion. He, he needs toning down, but, you know, same can be said about Yoshi, etc. I think if you keep this in mind and pressure him in an appropriate way, you know, this character that doesn't really have a backdash, I think you can get the king player real sweaty. It just boils down to good throw breaks. Don't duck. You'll take so much unnecessary pressure and damage, and you put yourself in such a bad situation. You have good throw breaks, you stand guard, the lows aren't all that. Sidestep Rover, force him to use homing moves. His keep out is not that good, he'll probably spam muscle armor like an idiot. Run in low, run in throw. If he wants to initiate on you, his initiation is kind of bad. You can step most, most of the good options. Initiate on him with good timing, and then pressure him, keep up the momentum. Again, most king players are lazy. It's giant swing, tombstone, and a super telegraph shining wizard. You can't deal with that stuff. If you're at the wall, one break, always right. This is my uh, uh, guide to 101 anti-king. I really hope it helps someone out there, and I hope you have a great day. Take care.